Um, but I want to start with a bit of a, a how and why question for you around responsible investing. Um, at Mubadala, why are you prioritizing responsible investing and how are you thinking about what that means to you? Well, uh, first of all, uh, Lauren, thank you for having me at this uh, event. Um, it's important for us to sort of uh, address some of the sort of the, uh, the questions around Mubadala, you know, what is Mubadala doing? How is Mubadala thinking about responsible investing? So I mean, let me start first by, by saying, you know, as you know, you know, responsible investing has always been part of our DNA. I mean, if you think about the, the history, the, the legacy of Mubadala, how we started, you know, responsible investing has always been at the core, uh, you know, in terms of sort of not only creating financial returns to our shareholder, but, you know, to, to create wealth for future generations to do well and to have a positive impact on the communities where we invest. So, I mean, it has always been part of our, our sort of uh, heritage, if you will. But I think, you know, as, as many investors, we realize that sort of, you know, uh, you know tackling responsible investing in a, in a methodical way is actually good for business. It's good for our returns. And, and, and we've, we've, we've taken a, a, a step forward. We've leaned in. Uh, in terms of sort of understanding, you know, how could we sort of go about doing this in a, in a, in a, in a systematic, in a methodical manner, institutionalizing sort of responsible investing uh, and, and, and creating the tools to be able to do that and, and having it as part of our sort of, you know, our whole in investment life cycle management, if you will. And you, and you talk about this tangibly. Give me just a couple examples of how are you actually doing this? So if we think about sort of ref reflect on, on Mubadala and sort of how we approach this, the way I think about it is that you know, it's not only about the investment life cycle and managing sort of the institutionalization of which we're doing, but it's also about sort of being you know, tangible in terms of you know, deploying capital and in terms of sort of managing our assets. So in terms of deploying capital, I mean, you know, you can, I mean, the, the, maybe the, uh, the biggest example is, is Mustard. You know, our investment in Mustard and, and what is Mustard is now shaping up to be as a, as a, as a leader in, sort of in, in renewable energy. I think this is, this is one of the ways where we, we have pushed, um, you know, investing in, in, in Tata renewables. Um, I mean, and there are various examples of sort of us deploying capital in this area. Now, if I think about sort of, you know, managing our assets and actually working with our assets to drive change, to actually you know, nudge them in the right way, Various examples, uh, uh, you know, Emirates Global Aluminum, one of our portfolio companies, one of the largest aluminum producers in the world, you know, and, and sort of their foray into sort of green aluminum, you know, uh, working with them to sort of, sort of push that envelope um, with their Celestial uh, Aluminum uh, product, uh, where BMW, by the way, is, is a big uh, sort of customer, uh, helping them actually, uh, you know, reduce their carbon emissions by... 222,000 uh, tons of CO2 a year. So again, you know, with our assets, global foundries in the US, for example, again, their push in responsible investing. I mean, there are various examples of sort of how we've done that. Um, but I think we also go beyond that and, and we've leaned in. We have used our, if you will, our convening power, our stature as, as, a, as a respected investor to actually rally the, the global financial uh, community to try to tackle some of these areas that I think are worth tackling um, and, and sort of, you know, um, uh, this year we, we, we hosted the One Planet uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund um, CEO Summit where we really pushed and worked with the organization to really come up with tangible solutions that are, res that are necessary for investors, in, you know, uh, to consider. So again, I mean, this, this is in a nutshell sort of how we have leaned in uh, in, into the conversation, if you will. And what are you seeing as broader perceptions of RI in the marketplace? Well, I mean, there's no question that, um, well, you know, uh, you know, everybody now realizes that responsible investing is, is good for business. Uh, and again, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not only us that are saying that. Actually, you know, one of the things I'd like to mention is, is, a, is a Bloomberg uh, study uh, that was actually uh, sponsored by Mubadala that has surveyed global leaders in terms of sort of how they're thinking about this. What are the issues uh, that, that they're facing? 
and what do they see? 85% of the respondents have said that sort of, you know, uh, integrating responsible investing is, 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 is key for sort of, uh, you know, improving their returns. Um, you know, taking into consideration the, the responsible investing uh, sort of uh, uh, frameworks, um, you know, they're integrating it now in terms of their investment life cycle. So, I mean, you know, the, the, the marketplace is, is responding and there is, there is movement, there is, everybody is, is, is jumping on the bandwagon. But again, uh, you know, th there are risks on the horizon that I think we have to be cognizant of um, and, and sort of investors have to, have to lean in, they have to sort of take a step forward, but also to do it in a, in a, in a methodical and in a very measured way. And in terms of those, those risks and those challenges, is it a lack of data or wh where do you see the challenges? So, I mean, I'm not going to mention the sort of the, what we see sometimes uh, in, in certain markets where there has been a, a pullback uh, uh, on, on certain aspects of responsible investing, ESG. I mean, that's, again, that, that, that to me is, is something that, um, you know, it's, it's a product of dialogue. Um, and, and I firmly believe that even with, with that, the pendulum has swung. Uh, it, we have moved forward. There will be sort of these, these sort of movements, but nevertheless, you know, the market has, has evolved. But again, I think, you know, the, the, the other thing that I think is more important is, is the, what you mentioned. Um, you know, to be really able to effect change and to have investors really um, you know, uh, advance, I think you need to have, you need to take into, uh, certain things into consideration. One of the things that we found out um, uh, from, from our work with the uh, One Planet Sovereign Wealth Fund, uh, with, with various sort of um, entities, is that the, the lack of data and sort of um, uh, integrity of data, the harmonization of that data, uh, you know, sometimes puts off investors. And I think, you know, we believe that in tackling that as a financial community, I think that will go a long way to really create the right conditions and really accelerate the, the movement um, and the deployment of capital in responsible investing sectors. I know this, this COP is far from done, but I know many people are already looking ahead to next year's COP in the UAE. Yeah. So I'm curious, as, as you're here and as you're absorbing all of this and, and thinking about this, what are you thinking about for next year? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm biased. I mean, I'm, I'm from the UAE, <laughs> so I know we're going to do a great job in the UAE. <laughs> but again, you know, also kudos to our uh, sort of friends in, in Egypt. I think they've put together a, a, a remarkable event here. But I think, you know, I think it's important to see how the, the conversations evolve. Um, you know, this noise in, in the marketplace, I think it will subside. I think, you know, um, uh, again, uh, Investors have to look beyond sort of the, the fogginess that, that is sort of, uh, that is right in front of our eyes now and think about sort of the, 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 the long road ahead. Uh, and I think, I think we have made strides um, as, as a financial community. Uh, governments have leaned in. I mean, the UAE has been also forward leaning in terms of sort of uh, announcing net zero targets, nudging the, 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 uh, the companies in the UAE to really adopt net zero targets. So I think we've gone a long way to, to really uh, make an effect change. And, and I'm confident that, that we have moved forward. We're not going to go back, but we will do it in a, in, a, in a very measured and very methodical way. Fantastic. Ahmed, thank you so much to you. Thank you to Mubadala.